Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 types of cyber attacks that uh, businesses face almost on a daily basis and individuals face even at home. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're talking about cyber security, cyber attacks. We're going to be looking at uh, the most common types of cyber attacks. The intended purpose is to damage operations, to uh, have a financial impact, to steal information, whatever it may be. Uh, we're going to look through these top 10. Now, cyber criminals and cyber attacks are getting smarter and smarter all the time. People are now working more and more from home, working more remotely than ever before. So the attacks are a lot more common than they were before as well. The first one that we're going to talk about is malware. Malware is short for malicious software, and it's really just some sort of software that is intended to cause damage to a computer system. So things such as viruses, worms, trojans are all type of malware. Often malware can reproduce and spread across the network. Mm -hmm. Malware attacks uh, can cause a system to stop operating. Uh, data can be lost. Uh, you can actually get access to a system as well if that malware is smart enough to be able to intercept, say, passwords and things like that so that you can actually have remote access into a system via a known vulnerability as well. Number two is phishing with a PH. Phishing, as the name suggests, think about it as phishing. A line is set out into the network, into an individual user's email, wherever it may be, and then somebody grabs that phishing line and it drags them in. Intended to deceive that person into perhaps clicking on a link or following certain instructions, but actually that email is malicious and is not genuine. If you look closely, an email will have suspicious signs to it. Often emails that are phishing emails will have a sense of urgency to them, urging you to do something to take a particular action. And often clicking on a link or clicking on an attachment in a phishing email may redirect you to a website that is not genuine. It may look like the real deal, or it could introduce something malicious into your computer. Often malware can come into a system through a phishing email. Sometimes a phishing email could also be targeted. It could be uh, customized to you specifically, to your name, and could be uh, even looking like it is legitimate coming from somebody, say, within an organization. A common technique is to have an email sent to you via, say, a person in a senior position in an organization, perhaps a CEO or somebody in the finance team, asking you to do something. Uh, and often, because you see it coming from somebody that is important, you're more likely to go and click on that and action what it's stating. A very common type of attack is what's called a denial of service or a DOS or a DOS, commonly against a website or a network or something that is facing the internet in some way. So targeting that website or the backend database with a lot more requests than what it's usually uh, used to could bring that website down. A more sophisticated way is a DDOS, a DDoS or a distributed denial of service where it's uh, not happening from one single source, but from multiple sources all at the same time. Potentially a pool of computers, multiple pings to one website, multiple pings to a, a group of websites or databases with the hope of overloading the system, overloading the bandwidth to be able to then bring that system down. Another common one that has really grown in popularity over the last number of years is uh, something that's called ransomware. It requires a person to pay a ransom to get that piece of malware, that piece of ransomware taken off a system. Commonly, ransomware will get onto a computer system in a number of different ways. We sort of touched on phishing before, for example. Could potentially encrypt a number of files on that computer. A warning message could be displayed on that computer screen telling that person that their files have been encrypted, their files have been lost, and if you want to decrypt these files or recover these files to go and pay the ransom. They could also be targeted by saying, you know, we've detected something suspicious on your computer, uh, pay this ransom to be able to remove it, or we notice your web traffic, we're gonna report that unless you pay us the ransom. The next one is a password attack. This is very, very common. It happens all the time. This could be against a website. It could be against an individual. It could be against a group of individuals. But essentially, the goal is to try to guess and crack 
that person or that website's password to gain access. They want to get access into a network, into a website, into a user's Facebook, YouTube account, whatever it may be, uh, by guessing that password. There could be elements of even social engineering to try to trick the user into providing information, secret question answers, things like that, to be able to gain access by cracking that password. Now, the two most common techniques are brute force and dictionary attacks. Brute force, as the name suggests, is we're just gonna to try to brute force our way to guess what that password is. It could just be trying a whole range of different words and combinations of words and letters and special characters to try to get access to that particular system or that particular user's account. It may try things such as that user's uh, name, uh, their address, their date of birth, hobbies, job titles, workplaces, a number of different things to try to brute force its way in. The other type is dictionary attack. And as the name suggests, it could start with the most commonly used passwords. Passwords such as password, passwords such as admin, passwords such as admin123. There's generally a common 10, common 100, common 1000 types of passwords and combinations of those passwords through a dictionary of sorts uh, to try to guess what that password may be. The next one is a man in the middle attack. And as the name sort of suggests, it's when something is placed in between the source and the destination. So for example, you are a user trying to access a particular website. You could be in a hotel connected to a Wi-Fi network that is managed by that hotel. That hotel Wi-Fi is intercepted by this man in the middle, by an actual person or a hacker or a different source that is monitoring the traffic that is connected to it. You then access the website through this man in the middle, through this Wi-Fi network, and all of that traffic can be viewed and intercepted. Another common example is we talked about this briefly in the phishing type of attack. A phishing email is received that links you to a fake website, perhaps a banking website that looks legitimate and looks like your bank's website. You then log in, but that is actually a man in the middle attack because that website is not actually your end website. It is a fake website. You then log in, it then registers your credentials, and then those credentials can then be used by the attacker to go and actually log in to the actual correct website. Very interesting one is one called uh, crypto jacking. Uh, you're all probably familiar with cryptocurrency, digital currency, uh, Bitcoin and other sorts of Ethereum and other sorts of currency coins that are out there, digital currency coins that are out there. It uses malware to install software onto somebody's computer to then go and act like a uh, miner. So hackers can use uh, this type of malware to crypto jack a computer to do the work for them. A very common way that hackers gain access to websites and actually steal information through databases uh, is what's called SQL injection or SQL injection. Essentially what this is, is somebody that is accessing a website that has a backend database to it, and a lot of websites do, and executing particular commands in a search field, in a login field, that is querying a backend database that is insecure. If the website or the database has not been set up properly and there are vulnerabilities and holes in the security of how it's been set up, they could potentially execute commands right through a search field as if they're physically on the database, which is actually quite scary. So in a lot of places, uh, the website is web facing, it's accessible on the internet, but the database is internal and it's not web facing, so it's secure. But that uh, website has to query the database. So if you've got an insecure uh, database server connection, web server connection, you can execute commands against the internal database through SQL injection. Anything that is within the database could potentially be intercepted. Drive-by attacks are very, very common, especially on malicious websites. Uh, this is uh, essentially a download of some software, download of some malware onto somebody's computer because that user has accessed a website that essentially was waiting for them to be able to go and download, drive by and download that software onto their computer. Websites are built in uh, website code, commonly HTML, 
PHP, other things like that. Uh, and there could be a command within the backend source of that website to install and execute a particular command. So you going and accessing a website or clicking on something uh, on that website installs malicious software onto your computer. And our last one is one that is called a zero day exploit. What zero day means is that there is a vulnerability on a application that has not been discovered yet. Microsoft released patches, Apple released patches to fix vulnerabilities pretty consistently. A zero day exploit is something that has not been made known or made aware to the vendor. So for example, Microsoft, Apple, don't actually know that this vulnerability exists which means that there is no fix for this vulnerability. So as soon as Microsoft or Apple or any of these other vendors uh, discover that there is a vulnerability in their software, they will then go and write a patch, write a fix, and then they'll deploy it. And then of course you then go and update your computer, you update your software. So this is why it's very, very important to make sure that your computer is patched. So you wanna make sure that you update your computer as soon as possible because that vulnerability needs to be fixed as soon as possible to prevent somebody from using that vulnerability to be able to get into a system. So that was a summary of the 10 most common cyber attacks. There are others, of course, and you can go into a lot more detail about each of these 10, but hopefully that gave you a bit of an overview and hopefully gave you some tips to be able to prevent yourself and perhaps your business from being exploited through these types of cyber attacks. I would love it if you liked this video, if you did find it helpful, and please comment below if you did, let me know your thoughts, but please also subscribe and click on the notification bell to be up to date as I release new videos. It really helps me, and it also helps you to know as I release new content that hopefully you find helpful. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time.